I think what impresses me about Mary is that she is both like us and very special. Like us, she is a woman of faith, a woman who needed salvation from her son, Jesus Christ. So she is our sister in that respect. But she's also special. She is the unique one among us who gave birth to God, the son. She is rightly called Theotokos, the God bearer. And that makes her mother of Christ. And we, the body of Christ, the church, can call her our mother too. The other thing about Mary that's impressive is that in the scriptures, though we don't know a lot about her, we have some real hooks to hang our devotion to her, her on. Uh, think of it, she is at the Annunciation, she's the woman who was startled, unsure of what was going to happen, but a woman of trust when she didn't know the future. And she put her life into God's hands, much as her son put his life into the father's hands throughout his life and on the cross. So she, she points us toward the son right from the start. And she says in her Magnificat response at the Annunciation, the Almighty has done great things for me. He has lifted up the lowly and so forth. Holy is his name. And then we also have Mary at the foot of the cross. She's the community of the church with the women and with John and caring for each other and grieving together and knowing what it means to experience terrific loss and loss uh, the way that Jesus died. Uh, we can link ourselves to her because of her humanity. And then think of Mary at Cana. She was a link, a go-between, a mediator between herself and uh, between other people and Jesus. And uh, that's a good reminder to us of what she is for us. So that's what I think of Mary as being uh, for us. She's the first disciple, the woman of faith, the member of the church, but the special member. Yes, and you know, Father, special is such a good word because Mary, being the first disciple to believe, she also reminds us by her yes that each of us is special too. And she's our mother and our sister, and she's walking alongside us on our pilgrimage of faith too. Um, but what makes her so special is that she is our opening because Christ was formed in her. And then being a Pauline sister, that's our spirituality. For Paul, it was Christ is formed in me. But Mary makes that possible for you and me and anybody who might be listening to us. She's the one who creates an opening for us to believe. She helps us open ourselves to the spirit so that Christ can be formed in us. And, and I really love the fact that Mary, at the foot of the cross, um, she, she stood by Christ. And because she stood by Christ, we know she also stands by us. And so I think that gives us all as believers a great deal of hope and, like you said, a connection and a link that whatever we're going through, Mary's with us the way she was with Christ at the cross. In fact, she gave us, Jesus gave us to her at the foot of the cross. And, and I just, I find that that does my heart so much good and helps me to relate to Mary in a very personal way that she she experienced so many things that we do and like you said loss that's a big one for a lot of people for everyone really everybody has their story of loss so um that i think it, hooking is is a good way to describe how we can connect with mary and there's four ways that the church has always said we can uh in which we can honor her uh, for her immaculate conception she was saved by Christ. She needed to be saved by Christ. But for her, it happened differently in view of the foreseen merits of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then she was assumed body and soul into heaven. And that orients us toward heaven. She's our reminder that uh, we're all pilgrims on the way there. 
Also, she's the virgin before, during, and after the birth of Christ. And so she's so focused on Christ, and Christ is her um, dedicated, uh, she, she is dedicated to, to Christ as her, her son and her savior. And then she's also mother. So the combination of the immaculate one, the assumed one, the virgin and the mother, uh, they come together to give us many ways in which we can honor her and uh, think of her as special and ponder the things that <clears throat> those different categories teach us. Yeah, and, and also, um, she's like our go-to as sons and daughters of God. It's like Mary helps us to be the fullest of whom we can be. And, and she does that because of her yes. That, that she is like somebody who's always on standby waiting to hear from us, to connect with us, but not to draw us to her but to draw us to her son and in a sense, holding him out to us and holding him up to us and pointing us to him. But I love Mary because she, God went about as low as he could go, not degrading us that he became human, but that he entered into death. And Mary did, Mary went with him. She didn't run from that experience of, the awful experience of the crucifixion that saves us. And so no matter what, I think no matter what we experience in terms of darkness or sin or difficulty or disappointment, because Mary was there at the foot of the cross, it's easy for us to know that she's with us when we have to share in something of the suffering of Christ on the cross. And doesn't that seem to give like a level of comfort, I think, for, for all of us? Mary, I'm hearing in what you say is a source of hope for us. Yeah. She's somebody who takes us from where we might be down in the dumps at all, and she lifts us up. Uh, think of her as the one who was called in the early church the new Eve. If Eve, along with Adam, represent... Uh, in the beginning, the no to God, the willfulness, the selfishness, the waywardness that's in a bit of a bit in all of us. Uh, Mary represents the fact that in us too can be a yes to God. And so she says yes, and she trusts in God, and she goes in a better direction from what was had before. She, if the old Eve was the disobedient one, the new Eve, Mary, is the obedient one, the one who listens and ponders the message of Christ and really puts it into practice. Um, and so that's really, uh, to me, Mary as a sign of hope. Yes, and, that's a good word. Um, I mean, the connecting with her as a sign of hope, because as you said, Father George, she turns us in another direction and and turns maybe what we're experiencing helps us to see it from the other side um, and that's what jesus did on the cross is he it, death didn't have the last word and mary in her yes turned upside down eve's hesitation and her no and it wasn't without a struggle for mary either i think that the fact that she was so human in her response, like, how can this be? It's like all of us live that question when something comes up that we're not planned on, the unplanned event, whatever it might be, whether it's good news and we're, how can this be like with the level of delight or suffering? How can this be? How did I do something to make me deserve this? But Mary um, sort of mutes those kinds of questions and with obedience and listening, I think of a lot of times we think of obedience as a burden, but it's really to understand what's God asking of me at this time. And Mary can help us to do that, I think, after Jesus, probably better than anybody. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's good to say, too, that Mary 
is not somebody who uh, is our alternative to the mercy of God. She's somebody who resonates with the mercy of God. You know, it's not that she is holding back the wrath of God. She is letting the, the mercy of God be uh, reflected through her out to others. And um, I know in my time in the Master Vatsan ministry program, in the in Theological Institute, offering courses on Mary and the saints, people really delight in getting to know the different titles of Mary, the different devotional ways that we can encounter Mary, the different doctrinal points about Mary. And some people start out really being so devoted to her, but needing to go deeper in understanding. Other people start out not really appreciating Mary or uh, having had much exposure to her. But for everyone, looking a little bit more deeply into the life of Mary and the church's reflection on Mary, both in its theology and in its piety, you get to know somebody who's your companion along the way toward following Christ and uh, Mary and, and other saints as well uh, aren't so much the, the neck through which we go to the head of the church, Christ, but they are for us kind of the people who stand with us as we encounter Christ. They kind of form a circle around Christ in ourselves, mm -hmm. a circle of friends who uh, call Jesus Christ Lord and call Mary uh, mother, sister, and friend. Yes, and, and since we are addressing people who are associated with the formation programs at St. John Seminary, I think that Mary as in the upper room, praying with the apostles for the spirit, mm. so that the church could really take off and we could become the fullest edition of ourselves in, as the body of Christ. That, that that really sums up for me as a past student with St. John Seminary um, MAM program, that, that learning with one another and listening to one another and growing with one another, that really you do feel Mary's presence, the kind of presence that is indicative of the Holy Spirit being among us and helping us to grow together. Um, I think Mary plays a really keen role in that as sister and drawing us to Jesus and holding Jesus out to us. So, so she's our model. She's the one uh, who we can celebrate and we can also pray with her and pray to her. Amen. <laughs> and so it shall always be, right, Father? <laughs> Do you think we should pray the Hail Mary now together? Yes, I think that would be okay. wonderful. Invite others to do it who might be watching. Exactly. You can start. Yeah. We go first and then I next. Okay, Father. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. <laughs>